It's now time for In Perspective. Listeners, Ricardo, you heard that clip a moment ago. And it's the shouting of residents of Bedwood Pastures in Augustown. And they were demonstrating and reacting to the fact that a 14-year-old young man, a student, was shot in his head while he studied in his house after coming home from school. Listeners, I'm not going to be in my usual combative mode this afternoon because I think this has jolted us again to another somber place in, in, in our society. Listeners, a 14-year-old was shot in his head while doing his homework. And it is almost too painful when I watched that video um, which was on YouTube because listeners when you watch it you see a father and usually it's the mother who we see in the news mm. crippling with the pain of losing a child and what we see is a father cringing almost in agony and pain rubbing his stomach as if he's feeling the pangs of childbirth. To show the grief that he's feeling. And he kept on saying, listeners, my baby, my baby, then kill my baby. He said, my track star, my quiz team star. And my understanding, listeners, is that the young man wanted to get a scholarship to attend Kingston College. Listeners, sometimes our police get it right, and sometimes they get it wrong. And I think in this case, they got it absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. I've said it on this program time and time again. My co-hosts have said it on this program time and time again. Our listeners, in commenting... I've said it on this program time and time again. There is a disconnect between our citizens and our police. It cannot continue. And as next week, Lasco will be naming police of the year. A police will be selected as a policeman of the year. It cannot be that those who are charged with the duty to serve and to protect are viewed as murderers, listeners, as you heard it in that clip. It cannot be that our communities are not only living in fear of gunmen and hoodlums, but they also have a fear of the police when they come into the community. One protester insisted that they only wanted to see an inspector in the community. They didn't want to see any plainclothes policeman. They didn't want to see anyone of a lower rank. And listeners, it is sad. Listeners. And listeners, let me say, I'm not for a moment saying that the entire police force operates in this ad hoc way, going into communities, not observing the law, and shooting randomly. But it cannot be that every time there is this disparity between what the police 
and what the community has to say. I think for far too long, we have been having these issues. And I think and we're going to put this question to the public defender as she comes on the program as well. And we on this program applaud the work that Indicom is doing. And it's a great work that they've been doing to ensure that questionable shootings by the police is investigated swiftly. But listeners, we must talk solutions. How do we get the community to believe in the police force? And how do we get the police force to convince the community that they are there to serve and to protect? It means, listeners, that we have to get to a place where the community feels Yes, and I've said this time and time again, where the community feels that they can trust the police. Never again should we have this. A Joel Lovely, 14 years old, shot in the head while he did his homework in his house. It is going to take work. It is going to take work on the part of the entire community to build this friendship, listeners. And this must start now. We cannot wait any longer. Because if we should wait any longer, we are going to end up with more Joel Lovelace and others shot innocently. Listeners, the time has Come for us to bridge this divide. And the divide listeners is getting wider and wider. The time has come for us to bridge this divide between the police and the citizen. And I believe the time is ripe and the time is now. And that listeners is in perspective. That was in perspective.